Hello, Health 230 students. We will pick up where we left off in chapter number 14. This is lecture two of three, and we will now be talking about weight gain during pregnancy. And in figure 14-8 in your text, you're going to see a, a very nice illustration of where that weight gain is occurring throughout the term of the pregnancy. There's going to be about a two pound increase in, in breast size. The mother's fluid volume is going to increase by about four pounds. That is interstitial fluid uh, within the body around the cells. The placenta is going to be about a pound and a half. It's worth noting that an organ at a pound and a half is comparatively pretty large <laughs> when you compare that to other organs within the body uh, like, like the pancreas or liver or kidneys uh, a one and a half pound organ is pretty sizable so the placenta uh, obviously very important but also fairly sizable the the um, the increase in blood supply is going to account for around four pounds the amniotic fluid itself that's the the fluid uh, inside the amniotic sac that the fetus or baby is going to be um, be housed within that accounts for about two pounds now of course that next one there the infant is <laughs> we're, we're going to see some variability there uh, some infants are rather small others can be very large upwards of upwards of you know, 10 10 and a half 11 pounds of course, those situations are almost exclusively the result of gestational diabetes, which we'll talk about more here in a few minutes. The uterus itself has to get larger. It has to go from about the size of a pear to the size of a beach ball, and the supporting musculature of the uterus is going to uh, result in about a two-pound increase in muscle mass. And there's a lot of variability in that next one there. Um, you know, a lot of women are carrying around more than an adequate amount of fat, so that increase of seven pounds is not necessarily needed. Um, however, if a mother does not have adequate fat stores, uh, she will almost assuredly increase, or well, she'll need to increase fat stores. But um, as you can well imagine, there's a lot of variability with that seven pounds that you see for the mother's necessary fat stores. Uh, what is what is absolutely necessary is that a mother, on a daily basis, be ingesting an adequate amount of calories and vitamins, minerals, amino acids, and essential fatty acids. Now let's move on to one of my favorite topics and that is exercise and um, it is beneficial for a woman to exercise during pregnancy ideally she needs to be exercising prior to pregnancy there's going to be some very distinct benefits to her as well as to the fetus during uh, during the pregnancy and uh, in particular there's going to be a very significant um, significant benefit to the mother during labor and delivery. Some do's for the the pregnant mother. Uh, begin gradually if just starting. Uh, exercise regularly, ideally at least 30 minutes per day. Make sure that you are getting an adequate amount of fluids during exercise and make sure that you are getting enough energy to um, to account for that activity. The don'ts are probably more important. No vigorous activity and um, there's a pretty good rule of thumb and I, I don't I shouldn't even call it that. Um, it's a guideline that has been set by the American College of obstetricians and gynecologists do not a pregnant woman should not allow her heart rate to increase above 100 140 beats per minute our body has an amazing ability 
to vasoconstrict and vasodilate appropriate arteries to move blood to muscles where the blood is needed and when heart rate is above 140 we see very significant vasoconstriction of the arteries going to the placenta and when you have vasoconstriction of the arteries going to the placenta that means a reduced amount of blood going to the fetus and or maybe I shouldn't say it that way because um, and actually I should not say it that way because there is not a a blood exchange between the mother and the fetus but we see less, less blood going to the placenta which means uh, less oxygen and less nutrients going to the fetus uh, certainly a woman should not be exercising when she is sick or has a fever and remember in particular that a woman needs to be watching her body temperature during the those critical periods early during the pregnancy because there is a relationship between uh, fevers and neural tube defects certainly exercise should be terminated if anything is painful uh, no bouncy or jerky movements uh, certainly, once again, as it relates to body temperature, no saunas, steam rooms, or whirlpools. And that last one goes without saying, uh, no activities that are harmful to the abdominal region. Um, generally speaking, a woman is going to need somewhere in the neighborhood of 340 additional calories per day during the second trimester, somewhere in the neighborhood of an additional 450 calories per day during the third trimester. Now, of course, that, that's relative. That's not saying that on the first day of the second trimester that a woman is going to need exactly 340 and that on exactly the first day of the third trimester that she's going to need 450. So that's a, those two numbers are, are relative, and, um, and there is going to be some variability there as a person goes through the second trimester and then goes through the third trimester. So we're going to see a progressive increase in caloric need. Uh, it is very important to be getting an adequate amount of protein, in particular getting an adequate amount of complete proteins. Um, complete proteins are ones that have all the essential amino acids. Those are the ones that cannot be produced within the body. And um, also getting an adequate amount of essential fatty acids, in particular an adequate amount of omega three fatty acids. We really don't have to worry too much about getting an adequate amount of omega-6 fatty acids. Uh, most of us have more than enough. Actually, most of us have an abundant amount of omega-6 fatty acids within our diets. Um, the omega-3s the omega are a little bit harder to get into the diet. Uh, however, if you are, are focusing on eating uh, appropriate foods, um, getting those omega-3s is not that hard. But uh, you do have to be careful because uh, uh, omega-3s um, are, are oftentimes found in fish products and fish products are oftentimes high in mercury so we want to be really careful that we're not ingesting too many fish products um, because of the risk of mercury poisoning. Some additional nutrients that the body needs. Uh, a pregnant woman should be getting at least 600 micrograms per day of folate and at least 2.6 microgram, micrograms of B12. Those two are directly related to uh, DNA synthesis. Our bodies need very substantial amounts of folate as well as vitamin B12 for a cell to go through mitosis or cell division and um, if that folate or B12 is not present then DNA replication does not occur properly and ultimately the cell malfunctions and oftentimes dies. And if folate, if there is a significant enough decrement in folate or vitamin B12 uh, that can cause some very significant birth defects. Uh, a pregnant woman needs to be getting approximately 27 milligrams per day of iron and um, somewhere between 11 and 12 milligrams of zinc per day. 
she also needs to be getting an adequate amount of vitamin D and calcium for bone and connective tissue growth. You're going to see a table here, or a graph, pardon me. You're going to see a graph here uh, that, that is figure 14-10 that shows the relative amounts of vitamins and minerals as well as proteins that a a non-pregnant, pregnant, and lactating woman should be ingesting. And a couple of these that should be noted, uh, vitamin A. Uh, lactating women need significantly greater amounts of vitamin A, and that means that they need to be eating vegetables that are brightly colored, such as carrots, sweet potatoes, uh, that type of thing. Okay, e even green leafy vegetables, um, th those are going to be relatively high in, vi in vitamin A. Prenatal vitamins. Prenatal vitamins are, uh, are, are, are necessary in most cases. Uh, certainly, if a woman is being very attentive to her diet and is ensuring that on a daily basis that she is eating exactly 100% of her recommended daily allowance for vitamins and minerals and that she is getting an adequate amount of amino acids, then a prenatal, prenatal vitamin would not be necessary. However, <laughs> in our society, a woman eating a perfect perfectly balanced diet is not very common. So oftentimes phys physicians will recommend prenatal vitamins and um, although vitamins are not necessarily regulated by the FDA, um, it, it's a pretty good um, uh, pre pretty good um, action to take to to take a prenatal vitamin at least once per day. It is worth noting, although I'm not going to go into detail, that there is risk to the fetus for vegetarian mothers. And um, it's not unusual for physicians to recommend a vegetarian mother to meet with a registered dietitian to make sure that she is ingesting the appropriate foods such that the the mother will be eating the essential, um, or com I should say, pardon me, the complete proteins, the ones that that have the essential amino acids within them. Uh, these next couple slides, pretty straightforward. Yeah, we all know that women have a tendency to become nauseous. Um, the reason that we touch on that is because. Uh, what is commonly referred to as morning sickness can very significantly impact nutrient intake uh, as well as can heartburn. And ways to alleviate that, uh, relax, eat slowly, chew foods thoroughly, eat small frequent meals, drink liquids between meals and not necessarily with meals, avoid those spicy and greasy foods with more emphasis on the latter, definitely avoid those greasy foods. Greasy foods can very significantly contribute to heartburn. Um, sit up while eating, wait an hour after eating before lying down, and that, that last one is um, is is pretty important as well. Um, when a woman is exercising or doing um, physical activity in general, uh, it's not unusual for the fetus to put some some pressure on the stomach and to cause some acid reflux, basically um, to push the contents of the the stomach back up into the esophagus. So um, eating just prior to activity, not a real good idea. Okay, I'm going to end here and uh, pick back up in just a minute with lecture three of three.